Divine True Spirit Assistance Discussions Giving assistance to people who have lived on Earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this spirit assistance discussion is Women Spirits Who Attack Jesus and Mary, during which Mary attempts a spirit conversation where Jesus is able to talk to the evil women spirits who have attached to him since conception and been with him for the past 56 years. But although the spirits are temporarily restricted, they are too unreasonable to have a conversation of any benefit. The session was recorded on the 3rd of April 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone again, it's nice to see you again, even though we only see you through the camera lens at this stage. <laughs> um, Mary and I are going to be doing a bit more channeling today, but uh, the first channeling we do is going to need a bit of explanation up front. So what I'd like to do is explain to you what the channeling is going to be, or who the channeling is going to be with, so that you can see, you know, and get some context to it before we begin. And basically, when I was incarnated this time around, so the, fir the first time I was conceived in my life, which was 1962, very shortly after a group of uh, very dark women spirits uh, attached themselves to my, phys to my physical body while I was in the womb, with, uh, still in the womb, my mother's womb. And what this meant was by the time I was born, I was quite sickly and uh, and by the time I was two years of age, um, I had to have a number, an operation on my bowel because a part of it, as the doctors thought, had died. And these particular spirits uh, have been quite malevolent in my life. They've been causing a lot of difficulties. Uh, they're a large group of women spirits who basically want power over men. And they've caused a lot of uh, difficulties in my personal life. Uh, the difficulties include basically uh, encouraging every woman who I've ever met to try and attack me at some point. And, uh, and also in my relationships, uh, the few relationships that I've had, um, the spirits have always tried to uh, eventually destroy the relationship in some way and uh, also influence the women who have been with me to control me and influence me to a large degree. And these women have also been systematically over the past, well, over the past 14 years now, systematically trying to kill me, uh, murder me. And so they've used a lot of techniques to try to do that, which under normal circumstances would probably have worked. And these spirits are used to killing men on earth um, through different, using different techniques. And, uh, and these women spirits have been trying all the different possible techniques that they have at their disposal to try to harm me in my life. So um, obviously it, it, it's good if we can try to talk to these spirits at some point, which we are not sure how it's going to go though, because uh, these spirits have been probably a bit more um, influential over the last few years in our lives, trying to, they've, they've basically upped the ante uh, trying to influence myself and influence Mary in different ways. And, and that's caused uh, quite a lot of personal pain for myself. But uh, it's also important to try to speak with them at some point if we can. But these kind of spirits uh, are usually very unreasonable and usually have, uh, now they are quite murderous, so now they have very high uh, desire to basically just get rid of me rather than attempt to control me because over the past 14 years their control of me has been has been reduced every year and so their overall goal which is what they were hoping to achieve right at the beginning of my life has actually not worked out and this has meant that they've spent close to 56 years with me trying to control me but over the last 14 years or so, or so now they're just trying to harm me or punish me for the for their inability to control me so, so it's quite an interesting situation with these particular spirits. Now, as a result of that, Mary and I, so here's Mary with me now, how are you babe? Yes. Mary and I have to sort of manage this situation a bit different than how we would normally manage it. 
So Mary has some ideas about how that's going to be managed. So perhaps we can hear yeah, from Yeah, and, and perhaps I could give a little bit more context. It's just um, a few more details to what you mentioned there. And you mentioned um, the increased influence in the last four years. Uh, well, the, inc the increased um, aggression. attack and aggression yes. in the yes. last four years yes. in particular. Yeah, mm. because I think... Um, they have less influence, actually. Mm. Yeah, they're having less influence over both of us, uh, hence the... Increased attack. Increased attack. And that is knocking both of us around individually, mm. uh, whereas before we were kind of um, influenced in our dynamic quite a bit by them, or especially myself. Mm. Um, yeah. Uh, so I would say it's only in recent times that I've begun to be more sensitive to them as... Uh, separate from myself mm -hmm. um, and so in order to do this today it's a bit tricky I don't um, because I can sense them now mm -hmm. uh, and their feelings uh, so over the past weekend I could feel some of their feelings very strongly but I don't necessarily feel that they wish to speak mm. <laughs> Um, and these are part of the groups of spirits who surround us at different times. We have a lot of different spirits surrounding us. And as we mentioned a few weeks ago in previous channelings, that some of those spirits are nice and some of them are just <laughs> observing. And then some of them are like this group of spirits who are yeah. trying to malevolently attack us and destroy us. And, uh, and so those people, spirits who are trying to destroy something usually don't want to come and talk about it <laughs> obviously <laughs> they don't really want to be although kind. these these women are pretty angry so they might come to talk just to uh, express that rage yeah mm -hmm. so i'm not really sure how to do it i've asked for rachel my guide's help mm. um and so we may we may speak with rachel to help us understand understand what's happening with this group and to maybe try to um, make contact with the group and we may talk to Stuart who we spoke to last week to just give uh, his sort of clinical observation of what's happening mm -hmm. um, but I feel the best would be if we could speak with someone from the, that group of spirits yes. because yeah um, and we have done that before with yeah. another group of women spirits. There were nearly, well, there were a few million of them that we spoke to um, a few years ago. It wasn't ever recorded, but these were spirits who were trying to destroy me as well, being influenced by this group of spirits. Mm. So, so you know, we we had that discussion four or five years ago with that group, and uh, it, it was interesting during that period of time because during that period of time I got very ill. Mm. Um, and uh, and then as I went through the forgiveness process of those spirits, um, they eventually left me. I could feel I felt them left their influence leave me. And then after that, uh, we got to speak to them. Mm. And uh, and then after that, they actually began to make some progress rather than finished up attacking us. So that alleviated quite a lot of pressure off our life at the time. Mm. And this is just another darker group of spirits who are still pushing that kind of pressure on us. Yeah, mm. yeah. And obviously each of us is going through a process of, of lessening their ability to influence us, but they are still having an impact, obviously. Mm. And hence their increased rage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'll just try to... Yeah, and I'm happy to talk with them directly and we'll see how that conversation okay. goes. So I suppose um, similar to when we spoke with, I think it was with Constance, mm -hmm. um, or um, was it Amantu who, who was helping us to establish connection with Constance's group? Well, that was sort of a bit different because I asked God to bring Constance's group to us and then... We, in speaking to Constance, then Amantu could connect to the group. So, yeah. so, no, so Amantu no. knew about the group, but he wasn't connected with the group. Yeah, yeah. no, sorry. I was just going to make an, 
a comparison yeah. to the condition of the spirits. Yeah. So this is Rachel helping me understand the condition of the spirits, that a lot of them are in this sort of... Um, Rageful stupor, <laughs> should we call it? <laughs> it's just a compulsive... <clears throat> uh, uh, situation where they're not very aware of themselves even mm. so you know that's always a bit more challenging to make contact yeah um, they're, they're less connected to a personal sense of identity that they're, they're just totally uh, enthralled by this point mm. in um, by their emotion by their compulsive emotion mm. So we, we perhaps can, if we, we can talk pray, to Rachel. But we can pray to break that <laughs> yeah. compulsion for a period of time at least. Yeah. So we just ask God to break that compulsion for a period of time so we can at least discuss matters with them. I'm just finding it difficult to willingly. Because they're in such dark condition. What are you doing? Well, I've just asked God to temporarily restrict your behaviour so I can speak with you. I don't want to. I hate you. Well, that's, that's been pretty evident for a long period of time. Uh, I, don't, I don't know whether you know why, really. I don't, I don't want... Well, I'm going to ask her to continue restricting until you talk about... What do you on. want? What do you want? Well, ideally, I'd like you to stop what you're doing for your own sake, as well as mine. What do you mean? Well, you're trying to harm me all the time. You're trying to harm people around me all the time. And I'd like you to stop. And every time you harm somebody around me, you actually worsen your own situation. You get more pain and suffering as a result of it. And I'd stop if you did what you should. I'm not going to do what you think I should. I'm going to do what I feel God thinks I should, but I'm not going to do what you think I should, ever. So it seems to be little point. Then I'm not stopping. Well, if you don't stop, then uh, you're never going to get what you want. I don't care. I don't care. Mm. Well, sooner or later, my progression is going to mean that you can't do anything anymore. What are you going to do then? I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, sooner or later, I'm going to progress to the point where you can't hurt me anymore. You're an idiot. Why am I an idiot? I can't, um, that's it, but, uh. Perhaps if we can explain to everyone the difficulties of doing what we're trying to do. <laughs> it's, that's very difficult for me to sustain that, that uh. I'm 
just still a lot of violent intention mm. yeah. I, I just find that difficult to maintain that because I there's some issues with my own mediumship probably of just I don't really know how to describe it you know uh, I've, I've asked Scott to keep him in a restricted state for the moment it's just so and much anger about that if we could just take a break maybe for five minutes and I might Oh, let, let, oh, we we'll can try just again. talk with Rachel about yeah. the situation rather than having to... It, now it's almost like now everyone wants to have a go. <laughs> when you say everyone. Well, now I feel like the, the, the group now wants to have a voice, um, but... It's, yeah, because their behaviours are being restricted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, exactly. They mm. want to... Um, I just don't know if it's very productive to channel people who are just abusive, you know. Mm. I understand it is if we can assist them to make a change, but it's just my personal fear of them that's mm. getting in the way here. Mm. Yeah, my feelings are that they, uh, if they're going to keep getting restricted every now and then, they're going to find it difficult to not have a voice. Um, but as you know, you don't have to do this. It's no, I know. I would like to help them and I think it would be good for everyone. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of people who are coming to our groups that are influenced by these women and there's a lot of women who are listening to Divine Truth who are influenced by these women into quite what I'd classify as violent or abusive behaviour. Mm. Yeah, and what I find is when when you, and I notice, I've noticed it in myself in the past and in others around us, is that when you point that out, those very spirits become more threatening with with the people and so there's this feeling of um that i no longer have but i have had in the past of wanting to completely reject and deny mm. the existence of these spirits mm. um which is just a fear-based a fear avoidance response to what is actually going on mm. um yeah Have another go. What are you doing to us? How dare you do this to us? Why can't we move? How dare you? How dare you? Why are you doing this? Uh, it's just a tirade. I could just go on and on and on and I, I won't let them, you know, so I don't know how to do this. Well, I'll keep, I'll keep restricting them. Um, and hopefully they might listen to something I have to say. <laughs> like, the reality is they can, you can keep yelling and screaming at us if you want, but we're not going to respond much to that. And I'm just going to keep restricting you as long as I'm able to and as long as it's advisable to in order to have some kind of a breakthrough with you. Now, how long that goes on is going to be dependent on your willingness to listen. And if you're not willing to listen, then there's little point doing this, but I'm also going to periodically restrict you in the same manner until such a time as you do listen. Uh, 
at the moment you're like spoiled children who just want to have a tantrum and uh, and you have very little idea of why, why you're doing what you're doing and what I'd like to do is at least explain to you why you're doing what you're doing so you have some idea we can have a sensible conversation or you can just stay restricted a bit longer. What do you mean? Why we're doing what we're doing? Well, you know, obviously you connected to my body when I was in my mama, my mother's womb, and that was that was nearly fifty, or well, that's fifty six years ago now. Do you realise that you've been doing this for fifty six years? Don't care. Well, I understand. Happy you. doing it. When you say you're happy doing it, every time more, the more you do, the worse you feel. So how can you be happy doing it? If you stop for any length of time, you'll feel how bad your situation is getting. You're in more pain now than you were then. It's your fault. No, it's not. It's yours, actually. It's your fault. Don't care, 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 don't care. Do you want me to restrict your voice as well? I can do that if you want. No, I don't want that. Well, we can ask God to restrict your voice and force you to listen for a little period of time if you want. I don't want that. Well, then how about we have a proper conversation instead of just repeating words over and over again? What do you want? I've already told you what I want. Oh, again. Mm -hmm. If I just say for the sake of our listeners that a lot of um, a lot of dark spirits inhabit the earth, obviously, and they're earth bound, but most of them are connected to individuals, of course. But when you try to discuss things with them or try to have a sensible conversation with them, they are so embroiled in their own emotional turmoil. And, they're, and satisfying their own emotional addictions, that they find it pretty much impossible to even have a decent conversation. And then secondly, most mediums feel the character of these particular individuals, and they're very dark individuals, and so they're very hard to channel for a person who's a bit brighter, and who obviously, and obviously uh, they're hard to channel because they are quite fearsome individuals as well. They are the kinds of people who, who would be like overt murderers on the earth and those kind of things. So the, these kind of individuals are difficult to converse with in any, in any sphere, whether they're on the earth still or whether they're in the spirit world. And uh, having a conversation with them can be quite difficult. Uh, and so what we're trying to achieve is just to restrict their behavior for a short period of time uh, so that uh, so that they are at least forced to realise that they are people still and, and also people with feelings. And a lot of these kind of spirits present themselves as lizards or dragons or, you know, all this kind of, a lot of this symbology that's used in a lot of even movies nowadays are all, all come from these kind of spirits where they're presenting themselves not as people anymore but 
as you know powerful creatures or things like that that influence the earth yeah but really they're just people a collective group of people who have a specific condition and in this case these women have a specific condition of rage towards men and uh, in particular and they want to basically destroy every man but they want to influence all women to destroy men as well so yeah um from speaking with Rachel over the weekend, um, this group specifically um, was attracted to you in order to, their idea was to raise the perfect man. So initially their feelings weren't murderous, they were just murderous towards your free will, mm. basically. Mm. They wanted to have a control over you mm. completely and um then as but my fear of them as a child is what caused a lot of my body problems, problems. as a child yeah yeah that's right which were potentially life-threatening mm. eh? all of them were life-threatening yeah mm. um but they're willing to be murderous mm. if if the child or the man or the you know growing child is exerting their will in a way that they don't don't approve of mm. Um, which is what I've been doing since I was born pretty much <laughs> <laughs> yeah and increasingly so as mm. the years go on and mm. that's why they now have they now and the it's almost like a from a person loses their almost intellectual capacity to reason the more and more they stay entrenched in this emotional compulsion which is true really for people on earth as well certainly it's like a drunkard you can't reason with him to get him <laughs> off his drink you know and you it's like a person who's a sexaholic you can't reason with him in any way to you know stop having sex with all these different people or or just a person who's addicted to control on yeah. earth if they mm. if that goes on unchecked for years and years and years in the um, end they, that's all they believe they, they they it's very difficult to reason about what's going on and they think that's normal too yeah. so they think control is normal or or being drunk all the time is normal or yeah. having sex all the time is normal or yeah. having drugs all the time is normal or whatever the addiction is whether yeah. it's physical or emotional you end up believing it's normal well and not even thinking not anymore. even thinking about it it's anymore. just automatic behavior mm. and i suppose well in spirit form it's even heightened that uh, emotional dominance and mm. so mm. um you, you know by this stage this group is very much in this compulsive kind of cycle mm -hmm. where and that was the there was a lot of shock when they were restricted mm. a lot of shock of sudden what is going on you mm. know this this a sudden draw to self-awareness i suppose that hadn't been there mm. um yeah but they don't want to talk yet no they don't want to talk yet without abusing no. us so yeah. um, but um, as I said, from now on, I'm going to periodically ask God to <laughs> restrict their behaviour until such a time as, you know, we have a breakthrough with them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's sort of like, you know, a child in a tantrum. The only way, real way to discipline a child in a tantrum is to hold its arms and hold its legs and keep it completely restricted so that it can't actually do anything to hurt itself or another person mm. and the child eventually you know gets to the stage where the tantrum is is exhausted and then the the trigger goes into their grief then mm. you know which is a better place obviously they're more reasonable in that place mm. yeah mm. it's an interesting thing isn't it about earthbound spirits um because usually when a spirit enters the spirit world there is more restriction there's always the interplay between free will isn't mm. there mm. um but when spirits are earthbound it's it's they're very not very restricted no and not at all really they they've still got possession of free will because no one ever loses it and then they interact with the the will of of people on earth mm. and so mm. in our case we've been damaged in certain ways in our relationship with women, mm. which then um, that's our will, our current state then enables them to to um, 
have a degree impact. of control. Yeah. Although now nowadays, as you say, it's not so much much control. It's more mm -hmm. just a rage and abuse now. Yeah. And um, and that's what it's interesting. We find that even with talking to people on Earth, don't we? Like. Yeah. You, we often, people on earth often come to us and ask for some truth, you know, mm. um, most of the time, of course, they are not willing or ready yep. to hear it. And so they go away enraged. And from that moment on, they start doing things like just attacking us all the time. You know, they, they can't let it go. They mm. can't let anything go that they've been told. Mm. Uh, so obviously there's a point of it's hit, hit them in some place. Yeah. And then... But now all they want to do is just attack and abuse. And in a lot of ways, these kind of spirits are the same as that too, once they don't get their way. Mm. And, and what we find is most people who come to us and ask us for truth, that really what they're asking is for approval of their facade. Mm. They, want, they, want us, they want us to say to them basically that the way they are right now is really good. You mm. know, that, and, and people are so addicted to their facade that if you break through their facade in any way, all they do is become enraged and and once they're enraged a lot of times they don't do anything even in a reasoning manner after that it's like they they just consumed by their rage um unable to feel any grief or other emotion which would allay it mm. and as a result of that just go into a never-ending attack mm. and we've had that happen a lot with the media as well just a media person who you know gets a bit of feedback from us all of a sudden he'll switch from being a relatively nice person into mm. a, just a, a terrible person, really, yeah. because his own opinion of himself is being confronted. Yeah. And, uh, and then, all, then all bets are off. He, he's willing to lie, cheat, steal, <laughs> do, do anything, basically, to support, his, uh, to, to support the fact, his, his opinion that we're bad people. You know? and, and when you say feedback, it's not, it's uh, not deep, feedback. Uh, no. penetrating uh, <laughs> uh, feedback. It's no. just, oh, there's an issue of ethics here yeah. that you're not, you yeah. know, we agreed upon an ethical Just thing calling a media and... person unethical is, a, is enough for them to go into yeah. one of these rages generally. Yeah. And it's very similar with other people who come to ask for truth as well. They, you know, they, they often have a very strong addiction to their own facade. And so whenever you confront the truth, there's an immediate negative response that mm. turns into a long, a long rage usually. Mm. And, and it's, you know, some of those people have gotten out of that rage. You know, yeah. some people we've met like 10 years ago, eight years ago, are now out of that rage and listening to divine truth again. Mm. But for many of them, it took them five or six years to get out of it. Mm. And others are still in it, mm. you know, from the day we met them or had that personal interaction to now, they're still in the same rage. Yeah. And in that rage, they do a ter terrible amount of destructive things, not only to us, of course, but, but to people around them as well. Mm. Mm. And they're destroying their own soul mm. uh, as well. So their condition is darkening rapidly while they maintain that level of rage. Anytime we live in rage, no matter what it's about or mm. who it's towards, even towards ourselves, we're degrading ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. In, in terms of condition. Yeah. yeah. So it's a sad dynamic that, you know, many spirits are involved in, as, as I've said to, well, a lot of our groups, there's around 20 billion spirits who, who surround the earth at any one time. Uh, and a majority of those are earthbound. Mm. And so you can imagine the amount of terrible negative influence that influence, that spirit-based influence has on what happens on the earth today. So a lot of these cycles of violence that have occurred in the Middle East and other countries, uh, racial prejudicism that results in violence, and a, a lot of this kind of... Uh, uh, racial bigotry as well where where you know ethnic bigotry i suppose you could call it uh, where there's a cycle of violence and uh, you know cycles of violence towards uh, you know the gay and lesbian community mm -hmm. and other cycles of violence like this uh, cycles of violence between different religions yeah. are all caused usually at their base are all caused by spirits who are now people have now become spirit and st still in this enraged state, influencing other people on earth to maintain that state. Well, it's interesting that you say it's caused by, um, because there's there's always that interplay, isn't there, between my will and the will of the spirit. Of course, of course. So, um, and I know this is something that comes up a lot for people when we talk about earthbound spirits and spirit influence and, you know, how is this just that 
while I'm on earth, there's these people around me that I can't see that can influence me. Um, but you, you get, in, like, as you say, you, we, we've talked about spirit influence. We did a whole series of quite good talks, I feel, at, in England when we were there yeah. about kinds of influence people are under. And, uh, and in, the, in, in every case, there's always something in the person on earth who, that attracts it and wants that a particular mm. influence. Mm. Or usually there's some kind of codependency where I'll do something for you mm -hmm. that's bad, as long as you do some things for me that are also bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's usually what drives most people into these kind of codependent addictions. Or, or false definitions of love. Of that, course, yeah. Um, belief systems. Belief systems, or if you're like, oh, what you're encouraging me to do is the loving and right thing. Yeah. And also this issue of the... Um, so a lot of Christians had, had the view, historically, that it's right to kill Muslims. Yeah. And a lot of Muslims have had the view, historically, that it's right to kill Christians. Mm. Obviously, both things are wrong. Yeah. But, um, you know, obviously these particular spirits, after the people have passed, after they've passed, they believe it's right, and most of the people they influence on earth believe it's right too. And that's well, the problem. And even if they don't, uh, the other thing I was going to mention was the, the, um, the emotional attachment we, we hold on to uh, in terms of people of our bloodline or our forefathers or our family. or All of that can cause us to even take on beliefs that we haven't really analysed, but we just want the approval or we just mm. want to feel a part of a clan. And so... Yeah. So we don't, you know, it can be so many different things. That's and, right. And with the definitions of love, you know, if you think about like our life on in this life now, we've both had injuries that we've had to work through about what it means to be loving and good to a woman. Mm. Um, and injuries in that can cause us to accept influence or to agree with influence or to let behavior let influence direct our behavior because we think it's it's the right thing to it's very complex isn't it yeah like for my in my case so i've observed two thousand years of women being harmed my own soulmate was harmed in the first century of course when i come to earth again and i and i'm born, born you know born through the same process everybody else is and um, all the emotions of my parents which includes my mother who also has been harmed in my, a lot emotionally she had an abusive father as well mm -hmm. so this all plays a part in my acceptance of our oh, you know women in fear and rage are sort of understandable yeah. given the fact that there's this long history of abuse yeah. of course from god's perspective um abu whether you're abused or not the rage is not understandable mm -hmm. you know god god doesn't approve of it mm -hmm. god knows that and and god knows that fear and rage are the primary causes of more violence on the planet mm -hmm. so anytime i out of harmony with that under under underlying belief I, i'm now attracting those particular spirits who believe that women should because they've been abused and harmed should now be able to abuse and harm others mm -hmm. and uh, and that's where that's where I, you know, I've had to correct a lot of my behaviour. And you can see the results of correcting it even in the groups, like where I'm obviously removing a lot of women who are still engaging that kind of behaviour, mm. which obviously is also distressing to this group of spirits who yes. we're trying to talk to yeah. because, because I've had control of those women in a lot of cases, yeah. uh, causing the attack upon myself or, or you or on others who are trying to do things God's way. Yeah. So it's an interesting dynamic, and as you work through the emotion, you lessen the control, obviously, and eventually you get to the stage where the control breaks. Mm. But before that time, they go from the bribery phase, <laughs> you know, where they're yeah. bribing you to do what they want, right through to the blackmail phase, and then through into the threatening, and then into actual violence. Mm. And most people do that. Like mm. Most people go from bribery to actual violence in order to get you back where you, they feel you belong. Yeah. And, uh, and, and you see that playing out on earth all the time uh, in relationships and friendships and yeah. so-called friendships and relationships, yeah. but also in uh, world relationships as well, relationships between nations, mm. where the so-called, you know, the, the lovely tyrant sort of thing mm -hmm. becomes a raging tyrant yeah. because he can no longer maintain control being the loving tyrant, you yeah. know, and, yeah. 
and so the you know this is a common form of abuse and it, and it co is caused primarily because of childhood issues where children are given everything they want mm. or they're giving nothing they want and they have so much grief about that and they now want everything that they didn't have yeah either one can cause these kind of terrible emotions yeah. mm. Mm. but it seems like they are not going to speak to us so i think we can give that up as a <laughs> we'll try again uh, probably privately or whatever yeah. uh, over the coming weeks yeah. to see how we can go talking to them yeah all right so we might just leave that discussion there i'm sorry if it was a bit disappointing for all of you but that's the way it goes with these kind of things they it's very difficult to break through to spirits who are embroiled completely in their behavior so you know, we weren't sure how it was going to go today and obviously yeah. not very successful. So um, aside from the fact that we have maintained a restriction on them for some time, which obviously has uh, caused them to become aware of the fact that they can be restricted, mm. which is actually a good thing. Mm. Yeah, It's like a child becoming aware of the fact that it doesn't have unrestricted uh, abuse of the family as, as it, at its disposal. Yeah, it's always a good thing. <laughs> yeah. I guess one of the things to ask is um, you just were able to uh, restrict them with God's help with that group. Yeah, I, firstly, yeah, I didn't you restrict did them, God did, yes. uh, just temporarily. Mm. Um, so the question that I need to pose then is why doesn't God do that all the time? Well, firstly, I had a loving intent, and my loving intent was that they are temporarily restricted so that I could speak to them mm -hmm. and potentially help them. If my intent was to restrict them just to punish them, then God would not have responded to that restriction. And if my intent was to restrict them because I was angry with them, yeah. then God wouldn't have responded to that restriction either. So, yeah. so God will only respond to my prayer, yeah. which is my desire to help them. And I know that the only way to help them is to have a, at least a time period where I can temporarily discuss at least something with them or even talk to them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, you know, God, God will naturally respond to that temporary restriction. Yeah. In terms of why isn't it permanent? Mm -hmm. Well, firstly, um, everything is already happening perfectly. So their ability to influence me um, is based upon emotional problems that I've got to resolve and I need to resolve them and in some ways having them with me reminds me mm -hmm. that I'm yet to resolve them. Mm -hmm. So this is a good thing actually mm -hmm. to have them with me. It's good for me in the sense because mm -hmm. it reminds me that the problem hasn't gone away so therefore I haven't resolved this problem mm -hmm. and and it also um, you know it it also doesn't restrict them from fully engaging their desire to destroy themselves. So, so as we've talked about before in the past, um, usually a person has to continually, a person who's in, so enraged like this group of spirits, has to eventually get to the stage where they've engaged so much of their rage that now they have no power to do it anymore. Mm. And Obviously, if we can stop that process before they get to that point, it's going to be better for them. Mm. But many people don't stop, of course, and, and they have to be let go to that point where um, they've basically been given so much rope that they've hung themselves. Yeah. If that, if, if, yeah. I know it's a, not a good terminology, mm. perhaps, but it sort of illustrates the point yeah. where, where, where they have to be given you know, the ability to exercise their free will to the point that their own self-destruction has resulted in the fact that they cannot maintain their energy anymore. Mm. So, so God's not going to permanently restrict their behaviour. Mm. And I can't expect God to permanently restrict their behaviour because that would be against the principles of free will. Yeah. But, but we can temporarily, as an act of love, restrict mm. their behaviour in order to try to assist them. Mm. And that's the reason why I could ask God to temporarily do so um, and that God responded to that request. Yeah. I often feel, as I do about a lot of things in God's universe, <laughs> that the spirit influence, it can be such a powerful lesson in the gift of free will. 
uh, you know, most things that God has designed seem to teach me about free will. But, mm. um, it, you know, if I reflect on myself, the acceptance of spirit influence in the past was almost a denial of my capacity to make a different choice. Yes. And then, um, then once I recognize uh, uh, this isn't my, you know, I'm taking on the desires of other people and using my will to enact them, mm. that's wrong. <laughs> that's a sin. Um, because I'm not inhabiting my own w will and desire. Um, uh, and then beyond that, then there's more there's more lessons about, okay, now that I understand that there's influence and there's me, what do I want to do? Uh, and also then if I choose it in a, if I make choices in a loving direction, I get, you know, rewarding compensation. In an unloving direction, I get um, sort of corrective compensation but the same thing is occurring for the spirits mm. um, that they are being taught even though it's quite slow because they're not engaging God's way that the more they engage their will in an uh, their desires and their free will in an unloving fashion the more they're restricted the more the corrective compensation is occurring and so the whole thing is like a big lesson in in free will mm, of course yeah yeah in, in my personal case, um, these particular spirits obviously have had a long influence in my life. Mm. And, and what happened at a very young age is I became very afraid of them. Yeah. And for the first part of my life, up until I was 33 or 34, in fact, I maintained that level of fear of them. Now, because I had a degree of fear of them, that meant that I, not all the time, but some of the times I did what they wanted. Yeah. And and that, of course, caused them to not attack me so much because mm -hmm. they were getting what they wanted. But the more I exercised my free will and the more I decided to not do things their way, that, you know, that way was wrong. Mm -hmm. So as I learnt things about the correct way to act with people around me, inclu including the balanced way of acting equally with men and women, once that began to kick in, um, then their uh, disappointment with me grew, of course, mm -hmm. and that turned into rage. Yeah. Now, the average spirit would then put a lot of pressure on that individual, and these spirits have put a huge amount of pressure on me mm -hmm. to attempt to get me back to that particular way of working and even to go more than that, to do exactly what they want. Now, if at the moment I had chosen to do exactly what they wanted, I would be in a much better physical condition, probably, in the mm. sense that they would be assisting my physical condition. Mm. When I say in a better physical condition, what I mean is I wouldn't be in as much pain. Uh -huh. That doesn't mean though, that uh, my actual physical condition wouldn't yeah. worsen, because yeah. obviously if I'm engaging sin, my yeah. actual physical condition is worsening, yeah. but I wouldn't feel the pain of it because my uh -huh. addictions are getting satisfied. The only times you really feel pain and suffering is when your addictions are no longer being satisfied. Yeah. And, and you still want those particular addictions met. So, so the, this, uh, this process is the more pain and suffering I'm in from their, from their attack of me, mm. the better I know I'm getting. Yeah. Uh, even though physically it's pretty tiring, you, yeah. know, uh, you know, at times I have, uh, you know, most of the time I wake up at two or three in the morning uh, from their attack mm -hmm. and uh, they and the more I have to do the more they attack me so mm. so I'm more tired the more you know it, and when I don't have much to do they leave me alone more yeah. but the more I have to do the more pressure they put on me as well and, and it's like a basically what they're doing really is they're they're playing a, it's not to them a game it's a very serious uh Endeavour. Endeavour. Yeah. But they are basically uh, playing this role of trying to either destroy me or support me, mm. depending on whether I don't do or do do what they want, mm. uh, respectively. So if I don't do what they want, they want to destroy me. Mm -hmm. If I do do what they want, they want to support me. And, uh, and you know, this is once you recognise that that's what's going on, you can then uh, do a lot about that. So So now the more attack I'm under, the more I see it as me progressing yeah. <laughs> rather than, um, you know, and I'll get to the point where they can no longer manage the attack. Mm. And, and once, that, once I've got to that point, they will disconnect completely. Uh, I will be removed of my physical pain that's caused directly by them. Yeah. And, uh, and then I'll only be left to my own, uh, the physical pain that I cause myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so so you know i sort of see this as a as a growing process but it re requires a lot of faith in god and a lot of faith in god's laws to work through things this way and uh, I, I notice what, what most people do is the opposite to what i do so they get threatened a little bit and as soon as they get threatened and um, bang they're straight into the addictive support uh, you know and in fact there's many men who are now attacking us who um, the attack began because we told them that their women mm. <laughs> were actually treating them abusively. Yep. And those men are so addicted um, to their relationship with their women that once you tell them that their women are treating them abusively, they now attack you. You yeah. know, yeah. that's how, you know, that's how a normal guy in my situation would act. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and I, and that's how I see most people on earth act when it comes to this kind of spirit influence interplay with their own emotional injuries. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Very so, uh, so it's important to sort of realize that, that while um, these spirits are temp being temporarily restricted, which they still are being temporarily restricted for a, li for a little while longer. Yeah. And, um, you know, they, they are going to now be frustrated. And of course that problem possibly will increase their anger once they are uh, let go, mm. but but it also increases their sensitivity to their own pain and suffering mm. as well. So so they will engage their anger perhaps and attack me a bit more tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. And uh, but then they'll realise perhaps because yeah. I've stated it, they'll realise that their pain and suffering is getting caused by their attack of me, yeah. and that yeah. that may cause them to pause and 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 cease the attack. Yeah, mm. and all that repetition like that they were doing. Um, they're just trying to avoid the sensation of their pain. They're trying to That's compulsively right. do something else now. Yeah, they're yeah. like a person going, don't talk to me, don't talk to me, don't yeah. talk to me, don't, yeah. you know, just yeah. in order to, you know, have, have, have prevent themselves from having to recognise something. Yeah. 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 It's a very childish way of acting, but when we're in our emotions that are driven by mostly childhood addictions, mm. that's what you become like. Mm. And there are many spirits in the spirit world and earthbound who have become psychotic as a result of their underlying desire to avoid their emotional condition. Yeah. So true psy psychosis results not from connecting with your emotion, but actually trying to disconnect to the emotion and using every technique possible to disconnect. Yes, mm. yes. Trying to get away from yourself so much that you're willing to just engage with uh, even people who aren't in a physical form. Yes, and not only that, but but to go ahead and take actions that you really have no idea why you're doing is yeah. is that as an act of a person who obviously isn't thinking very clearly, yes, and certainly isn't feeling very clearly either. Because mm. if they could truly feel, they would recognise the pain and suffering they're causing themselves and others, and stop. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Thanks. Mm -hmm.